So now that we're good and we've only taken one step and we've bunted from that point, we want to say go into one good step. So we're going to have the team set. Again, they're not running out of the box. All they're going to focus right now is timing it up so when their foot hits the ground on their crossover, they're bunting the ball. We're trying to connect these two almost like a layup. When you're shooting and you connect your leg and your hand, the same thing that our timing, when our foot lands, hopefully we time it up and make contact on that one step. Part two, guys, let's see it. One great crossover step, let's get to the front of the box. Way to use the end of the bat, Stace. Good, Megan, see it out in front. Oh, you killed it so much. Good, Ashley. Good, let's end on that one. So now we've taken that one great crossover step. A lot of people say, where are you bunting the ball? Are you bunting it up the line? Are you bringing it with you? Again, we're trying to drop it out of the air. So to show that part, now when we start throwing a little harder, we'll have the team put our small um, flat gloves here on. We call these hot hands, they're kind of infield type things. But the team's gonna put those on and they wanna work on, on their crossover step, just absorbing the ball and making it drop out of the air. So if we see Ashley come in here, she's gonna have to go full speed, it's a little new drill. But she's gonna cross over and see if she can make contact and absorb the ball and just make it drop straight down. Good, get those hands out fast. Good, get your hand out and absorb it. Get your hands quicker than your feet. Lead with that hand. It's coming in hard. Beautiful. Last one. Good. So that drill you can do with a lot of things. You can use a tennis ball if you don't have any of those hot hands to use. But anything you can do to reinforce that softening on contact makes a difference in bunting. If your hands are still coming forward on contact when you bunt, especially when you add the element of a fast pitcher, the ball is going to ricochet off. But if you can come back and absorb on contact, great. So now we've done flat-footed. We've done one step. Now we want to put it all together. So full speed, we're going to see our team bunting it and getting out of the box. It's really important when you do these drills to break it down, but also put it back together. So our team gets really comfortable standing and bunting off one foot and bunting out of the box, but they need to be able to do it where they're actually getting down the line. So now on this one, we'll put it all together full speed, see how it looks. Beautiful. Tough pitches. Why don't you move that ball? There you go. Last one. So the number one thing we see when we put it all together, it gets really easy to start going down the line. So we'll see our players get a great crossover step, they're in a good position, and then be early and start moving away. That's where we really want to watch our timing. Most coaches are filming, so they're watching frame by frame. If you can't do that, just break your team down and make them take one step and stop so that they muscle memory and remember what that side feels like. Also, when you go full speed, the things that I like to see, are they going after good pitches? We all know your best bunners and slappers know the zone. Every coach that calls pitches like myself, the first thing we do is test our slappers out when we're throwing to them, throw off the plate, throw up, change speeds, and see what happens. If they're gonna chase off the plate, they'll never get anything on the plate from us. So they have to show us right now that they understand the zone, and that's gonna help us know if they're going after good pitches or not.